Sports is president and founder of Barstool Sports, Dave Portnoy. Dave, good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing? We're doing well. So pretty effed up day yesterday, of course. So we didn't like what was going on, obviously. Boomer's pissed off. I'm pissed off. But we want to figure out who we're supposed to be pissed off at. So I know that you and Steve Cohen got into it yesterday. We know that Citadel is in the crosshairs. We know that Melvin Capital's in the crosshairs for you. And we know that Steve Cohen is in the crosshairs. Tell us why. Well, so Melvin Capital is one of the ones that we know shorted game stock and was getting ruined. And uh, Steve Cohen and the Citadel, uh, what Robert Griffin, I think his name is, they bailed him out. Their buddies with him, he worked for Steve Cohen. So they gave him, I think, billions of dollars, bailed him out. Uh, and that was going to do, do them no good, really, because the stocks were still going ballistic. And then suddenly... They changed the rules, which everyone knows. Robin Hood all of a sudden says, you can't you can't buy the stock. You can only sell it. They crater it. It crashes, allows Melvin Capital, whoever shorted it else, uh, to get out of it unscathed, basically. And that's why they're in the crosshairs, because it, I'm convinced that there's a legal activity that went on. And then you also have Citadel clears 60 percent of Robin Hood's trading. Um, so they have power over Robin Hood. And then you also know Robin Hood has an IPO scheduled, I believe, for next week. Yeah. Who do you need for IPOs? You need the hedge funds. You need all the institutional money. So, listen, they, something's going on. I, I don't pretend to know exactly what, but I do believe generally when there's smoke, there's fire. And Steve Cohen, and we went back and forth a little bit, he denied his involvement. I'm sure when he got busted last time, he didn't raise his hand right away and be like, oh, I was. I, I was involved in this, so I think where there's smoke, there's fire, and this is a five-alarm fire. Uh, Dave, do you believe that uh, Citadel forced Robin Hood to curtail the trading? Yeah, I think they're I, I, I forced, whatever the word may be, but I don't think they were idly sitting by. There's no part of me that thinks what Robin Hood did, they did – uh, on their own accord, knowingly, without any outside interference, like they said. Because here's the thing. In my mind, Robin is done. That, that company will cease to exist the way it existed two days ago, which is the Everyday Trader app. No one trusts them. Everyone thinks they're scumbags. And they had to know that. I refuse to believe they're that stupid that they could go in the face and basically, you know, take all the money away from their retail traders, which is the basis of their company, according to them, they, they had to know this was the end of their business as they know it, and they still chose to do it. I said, I tweeted, I do believe this because the government's involved now. There will be crimes and fines, and the options were this. Either a bunch of hedge funds and billionaires lose everything because it was unprecedented, or you do something illegal and you deal with the repercussions. Steve Cohen paid a billion-dollar fine. These guys can pay billion-dollar fines like we pay $10 speeding tickets. So I think those are the options. We lose our hedge funds. We lose our mansions, our yachts, whatever. Or we break the law and deal with maybe a white-collar crime. I honestly think that's what the choice was. Well, you know, you do know, and, and I, I'm assuming that you know this, that all of these trading platforms are regulated, and they all do have – alarms within them when things start going haywire they have to make sure that they have enough liquid to uh liquid uh, assets to be able to cover all this stuff going on uh behind the scenes so i you know it's not just robin hood that would shut themselves down i you know a number of other trading platforms would end up doing the same thing simply because they are regulated by the sec Right, but they, I mean, Vlad from Robin Hood, and, and we use them as an example. I use them because they kind of started this thing, and, and they're known to be the, the retail you know, platform. He said there, they, there was nobody but them who decided to do this, and they did it only to protect their clients. And by the which, by So the, which the, clients, the hedge fund clients or the no, everyday no, they're day saying trader? they're everyday traders. They're saying the people who are investing with them, they were protecting – the Joe, Joe Smith and the Jimmys and the Joes from themselves is what they said they did. That's what he went on all the interviews and said he did yesterday. And if that's what you're doing, then freeze it. Like, don't crater it. Like, don't let people buy or sell it. Just freeze it where it is. Figure it out. Tell your people what you're doing. Allow them to sell it. But to, to basically, I mean, they cratered the stock. They cratered it. And they had to know they were doing that. So how is that protecting their the people who invest with them? So, Dave, as we talk to Dave Portnoy on the fan and CBS Sports Network, is this a plausible explanation for Steve Cohen's involvement? 
this Plotkin who worked for him, who is now at Melvin Capital, it's Steve Cohen's protege. He has made a ton of money for Steve Cohen. He sees that Melvin Capital has taken a bath. Steve Cohen says, all right, I'll give you some cash to cover it because you've been great to me over the years, and in the future I expect you to be great to me. And he's just helping out his buddy in that way, and he's not really directly involved in this fugaziness that's going on to get the hedge funds in the situation they need to be that ends up screwing the little guy who are the users on Robinhood. Is that a plausible explanation? Yeah, 100%. Steve Cohen, I, I asked him on, on on social media, do you unequivocally deny any involvement? He denied it. I don't have any proof of it. But Steve Cohen, as I think everybody knows, is a, one of the more powerful like guys on Wall Street still. Isn't billions based on him? Yeah. So, I mean, to, to think that he doesn't have – uh, a few buttons he can push, or a few calls he can make to try to get this thing done is, I don't think that's beyond reason. Yeah, it wouldn't be beyond reason, but would you, do you think that he in any way, shape, or form is uh, knee deep in this shorting of these different stocks, including GameStop? I don't think that he necessarily was like involved with Melvin Capital, so to speak, but he could be, he could have money in there. Um, I, I think I think it's those three. I think it's Melvin. I think it's it's Citadel, and I think it's Steve Cohen, who are all like buddies, and they did a lot to pressure whatever happened yesterday. I again the 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 Robin Hood guy on TV said they had no li- liquidity problems, and they were doing it to protect the people who trade with them. That is insane to believe that. How about the fact that Janet Yellen? Received eight hundred and ten thousand dollars from Citadel and speaking engagements. Yeah, that also that also is insane. And and you know you don't want to make it political, but th- those are clearly theories that are being thrown around that she put pressure. And and Boomer, you you mentioned multiple firms shutting down trading. That's one of the theories. Well, how do you get to Robinhood? How do you get to TD Ameritrade? How do you get to a bunch? Well, there's pressure from Washington. And who would do that? The Secretary of the Treasury, who literally is buddies with the Citadel. So, listen, I think the one thing, myself, you guys, it sounds like in, I think, 99% of Americans believe is Wall Street is a dirty, crooked game. And this was so overt, what they did, so in broad daylight, that the first time the retail bros with no connection are winning and winning big – and all of a sudden, everything changed. I use this analogy, Boomer. It's like if you're playing football and it's fourth down, you go for it, you don't get it, and then somebody from above just says, we're giving you two more downs. That's what it felt like happened last yeah, year. I'll tell you what, the Packers could have used that last week, yeah. um, the way you think. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the interesting thing, though, again, I go back to the regulations and I go back to the systems and what's built into the systems to protect the systems from being overstressed. Which, you know, I I think the people on Wall Street that are there every day will tell you that those systems are there. So something like what happened over the last two days would never happen. I and I look, you're the guy that's doing more for small business in this country than anybody. I mean, every dopey politician has no idea to do how you are doing what you're doing. And you're still always supporting it. And I, and I just want people to know out there that what you've done in that regard is just simply amazing and something that's been needed desperately because the uh, the morons in Washington can't get their act straight. So and that and that's both sides of the aisle. That's just, just you know, one side of the aisle. So I, I just want to say congratulations on that. Now, this is a whole nother thing now, because it sounds like you're fighting for all these folks that have been day trading since you really got into it when the pandemic started hitting last right. year. Right, all the guys that were sort of following you with Davey Day Trader that are your guys, that are your stoolies, that are that are there. I mean, this is your audience. This is sort of our audience, too, in a way. Yeah, and it, 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 it this notion that they have to be protected against each other, like I invested in it, and, and I keep seeing, like, old-school people, the fundamentals of the stock, and listen, we're not idiots. We know that GameStop isn't worth what it's worth. Nobody's saying that, but everyone realizes the power of the Internet, and that's why they were doing it, and you have to adapt or die, and this is the new system we live in where the Internet and popular opinion and Wall Street bets matter. People are betting on that. That, but they weren't going into this knowing you could change the rules. And that's what that's the thing that happened yesterday. And Boomer, you're right.
right about the regulations and it, when stocks get hot on the stock market, they halt trading, and those are automatic triggers. But if you listen to what the Robin Hood guy said, he didn't say that happened. He didn't say there was anything automatic. He said this was they were protected. They no liquidity problems. Right. And that but they, they got a billion dollars overnight, home. though, Dave. That's the thing that's so crazy to me is they had no liquidity problems, and all of a sudden they raise a billion dollars for what? You know, I mean, yeah, the, well, the, the, the other interesting thing was yesterday it was reported that Janet Yellen was on the phone all day long with people at Wall Street at all these funds and all, you know, at the SEC and everybody else trying to figure out what the hell was going on and how they were going to, you know, curtail it and how they were going to stop it. And that's the thing that really worries me. Uh, and I, you know, and I just, it's just, there's too much inbred. Uh, at, at these top levels, and the people like Dave and your followers that are doing these day trades really feel like you guys have gotten screwed in this thing. A hundred percent, and I've asked this as well. Does anybody honestly believe if it was the hedge funds or the institutions that were suddenly making millions and billions? There's an article that is a Wall Street Journal or something. Citadel makes $6.87 billion on the volatility of the stock market. That's a real article. And then we turn around a week later, hey, we got stopped. It's too volatile. Citadel's getting killed. It's like, what? well, which one is it? Yeah, well, they want- the, the, the other amazing thing is uh, one of the board members on one of these two hedge funds is Ben Bernanke. It, I, I think it's Citadel. He's either on the Citadel or the Melvin board. And, you know, we all know where he came from. And we all know those connections with Washington and everything. I, I just – It's a dirty game. That they, yeah. And I think that everyone is kind of feeling the same way, that, that the only reason what happened happened yesterday is because the rich were losing and the common people were, were winning. And I, you rarely hear or never hear when it's reversed that all of a sudden people just press the pause button like they did. Not even the pause button. They reversed it. They just turned it around and said, okay, you can only sell it. There's all these uh, instances of people saying they had forced trades. So it's just, uh, you know, it stinks. It stinks right. to high heaven. All right, let me, let, me, let me say if I told you this. If, if I told you that I believe that Cohen's firm, Point72, has an investment in Melvin Capital, wouldn't that make – Point seventy two exposed in this area as well. Well, yeah, I mean that's that's the connection. But w- what Melvin? No, I mean nobody's officially saying Melvin Capital did anything wrong yet. But that is that just seems so naive to believe that, um, and no one's going to raise their hand and, and admit it. And I think the only way we'd ever really get the answers is a full fledged investigation with subpoenas and phone records and find out what happened. And it goes back to my point at the beginning of this call. I think these guys believe, worst case, it's investigated and they get a fine. I mean, that's what happened to Steve Cohen last time. Yeah, so Steve Cohen said that he wanted to talk to you offline about it. You said, well, I'm not talking offline. That's where the shady stuff happens. Has there been any communication with you guys that we haven't seen on Twitter? No, it's all it's all on uh, social media. And people are getting on me. They're like, you are too soft to them. Like, you, you, I mean, I don't know what they want me to do. <laughs> you you said you want them in jail. It. Like, what are you talking about, soft? I know. Well, I'm like, at least he came forward. It's, I, I don't know. I, I don't no, I don't have evidence of anything except common sense. And, and I think everybody with common sense knows something very shady happened yesterday. So do you think, I, you know, yesterday I was following you a little bit on Twitter, and I was watching some of your, you know, your um, – what do you call them, press conferences, that you have your emergency press conferences. And, man, you were just going off on Steve Cohen, your site, basically saying the Mets should be out of Major League Baseball, he should be out of Major League Baseball. You still feel as strongly today as you did yesterday? I still think he definitely is involved to a degree. How involved, whether it's his friends. But, I I mean, do you get – somebody sent me this yesterday. When when you're – involved in two of the greatest uh, short squeezes in the history of Wall Street. Do you get the benefit of the doubt? I mean, he already was he was already convicted of one of them and got a two-year ban. So it, it, my, if you put a gun to my head and said, was Steve Cohen involved, I would answer yes without much hesitation. Um, it, it just adds up. It, it's so clearly all together. You know, it's just I don't know how anyone can look at the facts as we know them and say that he didn't have something to do with it. How did you uh, How did you take uh, his tweets back at you yesterday when he said, hey, you know, I'm just trying to make a living? 
Did, did you? Yeah, I mean, I, in a weird way, I, I kind of like that, but yeah. it's um, because yeah, that's like almost something I would do. But I can see how it's infuriating. I don't think he gets that. The, you know, there's real money being involved. This is life-changing money for a lot of people who jumped on this bandwagon and who had it ripped away with. With no, you know, no repercussions or no way to get it back, even though it's up again today. But I wouldn't have liked it if I was in a position where I lost life-changing money that truly would affect my life. Yeah, where do you think it goes from here? I mean, I know that there's, I guess, limited buys on some of these stocks again today. But where does it go from here now that this sort of cataclysmic event happened? Well, yeah, those stocks are still rocketing last time I checked. I was looking at them, and that, what do we got? Yeah, AMC is up 63%. and all those, So they're all, they're over the moon. GMC was up like 100%. That's another question uh, that I would ask is, and it is limited buying, but still a lot of buying, what changed from yesterday to today where you can do it? The answer, obviously, is the hedge funds were able to cover themselves. Yeah, absolutely. That's the only thing that changed. Hey, hey by the way, do you do you know this guy, uh, Roaring Kitty, up there in Boston? So Roaring Kitty, who <laughs> helped start it, I didn't know who he was, but he had – someone sent me the picture at the beginning. I did the DDTG stream. And I just made that up off the cuff for Davey Day Trader. But he has a picture of the our logo behind him. So he's just part of this army of people who's, who's been trading. They're saying that, you know, his name is Keith Gill. They're saying that he he actually had an investment of about, what, uh, $745,000, almost $746,000 that actually – Became worth forty seven million point nine. Forty seven point nine million dollars. Good for him. And, and you know, this is what these people don't like. The, the the this is just a guy who did it, and it's not the hedge funds who are making billions upon billions upon billions and there's never an issue with them doing it, taking advantage of volatility and, and them going and analyst reports and everything that's crooked that I've noticed from doing this. But suddenly when an individual does it, the other side has a problem. I say good for him. Hey, you still uh, knee-deep in the uh, Barstool Fund? Are you still being able to give those grants at this point with the money that's there and the money that's still coming in? Yeah, every single day I'm on the phone. We call, try to call about 10 to 20 businesses a day still um, and, and dole out as much of the money as quickly as we can. The money is still coming in, and we'll continue to do it as long as we're still in a lockdown and hopefully – That'll be ending sooner yeah, rather than yeah, later. Hopefully. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. look out for Kavanaugh's in Blue Point. They sent you a. It's my place, man. It's the greatest yes. sports gambling Irish bar. Great people. I know they sent you a thing, and they said uh, make sure Dave it? knows. Kavanaugh's. Kavanaugh's yeah. in Blue Point, New York. Hey, hey Dave, um, how, how, how much is that fund raised? We're over thirty-three million now. That's unbelievable. And how much have you given away? So it's a little bit of a formula because what we do is we don't just give you one check. So if someone says they need 25000 for taxes, rent, payroll, whatever it is, we give it to them, and then we say we will be there every single month as long as the pandemic. So if it's six months, that's six months times 25. So by our math, we're probably about 80% exhaust. Basically, we have a gigantic payroll. So we're probably about 80 85%. Yeah, I've seen some of the stories, and uh, it's amazing. It really is. I mean, it's a, it's a testament. I know you're crazy. I know your site is crazy. All your guys are crazy. It's not for everybody, but what you're doing here in this uh, small business world is nothing short of a miracle, and I know so many people appreciate it. Yeah, it's been gratifying, and, and you know, it, it, like what you said, we're an interesting site. We have our critics. We have our fans. I think we've always been very true to who we are, and that's what allows us to do things like this. It's not the first charity we've done. It certainly won't be the last. It's when we can help, and it's kind of organic. We like to do what we can. Yeah, don't forget, Kavanaugh's and Blue Point. <laughs> they love you over there. I'll look it up. All right, th- thanks, Dave. We appreciate your time this morning. Uh, keep in touch. We'll see where this goes, all right? All right, thanks. Take care. All right, that's Dave Portnoy of Barstool Sports. He still believes that Steve Cohen is involved in some way. Now, I'll give Dave credit. You know, Dave's got his strong opinions, but he also says, I don't have any proof, I don't know, I don't have evidence, but this is what I believe. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.